Hi friends, welcome back to Live with the Roxy on this Friday where I'm up several hours late because today just kept happening. You know those days that they just keep on coming and there's nothing you can do about it and so they just keep on coming and you can't stop the coming. This is not a sex thing, this is real life. It just, it just kept coming and I was just like, I feel like I'm playing whack-a-mole, you whack it, it's going down whack it it's going down and they just keep popping up they keep popping up you just keep fucking hitting them down they just keep popping up that's how today felt all fucking day also have not slept in a couple of days so that also realized just about an hour ago that it is the weekend and so that uh i guess i guess I should do something this weekend. I think I, I just thought of a new script idea. I think I'm going to stay in tonight and try to work on that. And then it's supposed to be nice tomorrow. So maybe I go outside. <laughs> I kind of want to talk about lessons today. I had a lot of lessons that I learned this week. I had a really beautiful day yesterday with Grammy. And we got to go get our nails done. We were supposed to take her to get her hearing aids. But then they were too busy and all booked. And we couldn't do that. So we went and got our nails done. And then we had tea and scones outside and it was really fucking nice and I was picking our brain about you know when you've got somebody when you are in the same room as somebody who's in their 90s there's just so many questions to ask them as much time as I spend with her I just there's so much that I want to know because she's lived such a beautiful life so far and she has so much advice so I got a ton of different advice from her and then I got a lot of advice and a lot of just lessons of the week and I was like I guess I, I think that this is a good time to share these with everybody. And if you guys have any lessons or any questions, comments, concerns, anything, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. I want to hear from you, my rock stars. Uh, for everybody who has been asking me to make an Amazon wish list, I think now that I officially have that World Girl mailbox, that which also is my personal mailbox, I think I can do so. What I will say is that it is my 30th birthday coming up. And so I think I'm going to do that in time for that because we want to build a world girl studio. So, you know, for my birthday, um, from my friends, family, anybody in here who you guys are my friends and family, the people who are willing and able, I know that I want every all stuff for the studio. So I know that I need four XLR mics and I need this. When my friend texted me today about exactly what the second thing that I need is. I think it was a, let's let me see. It's a uh, a mixer with a USB out, but it's just the specific one that allows you to do sound bites and whatnot through it. And I need to get more practical with the things that I want in life. Everything that I get, I always like my favorite gift ever is from the people who sent me to Collider, you, the you guys of the world who sent me my camera, which we use for World Girls every shoot, that road mic, that tripod, that's the stuff that I need that makes my life so much better. And so I am definitely going to be um, setting something up there. So looking forward to hopefully being able to build out in this space because I got a little bit of space here. It's longer than my arms, uh, a little bit of a set and to make sure that we, the world girls can shoot here so we can do more shoots together and figuring out the internet up here with the USB and all that stuff. So I got some things in the works and I got to just start making shit happen. Another reason why I'm staying home to work on this script. I think I got a pretty cool idea. I was just on the phone with Jeff. I called him. I was like, does this exist? He was like, I think there might be something in development. I'll keep you posted. And I was like, okay, I think I want to work on it anyway. We'll see. We'll see. But I think it's a, it's a, it's a sweet and simple idea. So I'll keep you guys posted if that ends up working out. Also, hi, friends. I hope you guys have weekend plans. No matter where you are right now, if you're like, okay, this weekend I want a little R&R. &R. If you're like, this weekend I have to work my ass off. Or if you're like, this weekend... I am going to watch a bunch of movies or if you're like this weekend, I'm going to rage my fucking tits off, whatever it is. I hope this weekend is what you need it to be for you. We need all of those different things at different times in life. And I hope that you do something that makes you feel 
fucking great this weekend. Shout out to everybody who is joining me here live. Simply Emily, Almosis, Pink Sweet, Andrew Thomas, Bruce Banner, Manny Gonzalez, Noah Denman, Glenn Caesar, uh, Jake Yacoveta, my amazing mod. Mm, scroll, uh, keep scrolling, 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 scrolling. Come on, John Get Bent, uh, Jimmy Nails, Gregory Castillo, all of you guys, CeeLo Bonino, Robert Turner, everybody showing up. I appreciate you all, including. Ronnie H7, Hitman Hudson, John Bainbridge, Juan Mendez, Harry Chest. Hey, third is along with the Harry Chest. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Sir Joker 40, gang, 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 for sure. You guys are incredible. Let's start with the Streamlabs and then I'll start getting into some of this advice. Hopefully it'll be a helpful show, a show that is a little bit fun, a little bit informative, and a lot of bit rock stars. Starting in the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. We've got a couple things coming through already on this May 28th. Starting with Adrian Bailey, who says, Hi, Roxy. I have watched the Friends reunion episode three times. Yes, Adrian. Three times since it aired yesterday in the UK. What a fantastic reunion. I loved every second of it. The guests were great to see. Lady Gaga singing with Lisa Kudrow was amazing. Thanks, Rox. Love you. I appreciate that. That's very sweet. I think Lady Gaga and Lisa Kudrow was some people's favorite part. To me, I was just like, less Lady Gaga and more Lisa Kudrow. Not because I don't love Lady Gaga, but just because I was like, everybody else who's not a diehard friend, I feel like is obsessed with seeing Lady Gaga there. And I was like, I just want Lisa. Give me more Lisa. I need all the Lisa. Give me the Lisa. We need the Lisa. Show me the Lisa. Hitman Hudson says, I assume you're not allowed to tell us who a certain someone's new partner is, but my money's on Kobe or Felix based on head shape of the question mark guy in the thumbnail. I feel you that the head shape does definitely give some things away. Uh, so some people are speculating Damon, which is a big swing if true. That would be really big too. I'm definitely not allowed to say anything. Christian and Mark don't even know, so... That would be funny if you guys knew before them. But what I do know is that I'm really excited. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. And I'm excited to put on one hell of a show for you guys. So that's the extent of what I can say. Paul3JP in the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stratus says, fam, finish the Friends reunion. The ending brought it home. Yeah. Coolest part was, I guess, <laughs> what just happened? What just happened? <laughs> this is what a, a stroke on air looks like. I tried to say what he wrote, which is the coolest part was seeing the actual, but I tried to start saying actual first. So I was, was seeing actual, was seeing act, and then I just couldn't get there. Was seeing the actual bloopers from the filming back in the day. All that being said, they did my boy Perry so dirty. I don't know if they did him as dirty as he did himself, kind of. I still love him though. Literal shots were Matt LeBlanc is blocking him. That's not fucking fair, Apollo. You think they, they did that to do him dirty or to help him? Come on, friend. Come on. Be real with me. Roxy is going to be Jeff's partner confirmed. Zeno hour. Jeff would be fucking screwed. I was just, I was thinking though, storyline wise, how sick that would be if I was actually getting good and I jumped in as his partner. But when I tell you guys, I still go through entire matches where I don't know one answer. I go through entire matches where I don't know one fucking answer. That is the truth. You know, what's funny is that sometimes I go entire matches without knowing the answer. And then all of a sudden, the only answer I know is the five pointers. Because you either saw it or you didn't. It's the other ones that I have a really hard time with. All right. Streamlabs, any other questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, things that you want me to know going into this weekend? Cheers to the freaking weekend. I drink to that. Yeah, yeah. I might go live tomorrow because it depends on what I'm going to do, but there's not something that right now keeping me from it. I'll tweet out at you guys and I'll let you know if I do. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on Sunday. Let's get to some of this advice. You guys chime in, give your biggest advice from the week as well, or see if any of this resonates with you. So one of the things while I was sitting outside with Grammy that I was talking to her about was how she has been able to maintain this relationship for 30, not 30, since she was 
20 years old. So for, I think they're coming up on 74 years that they have been married. 74 years. It's a long ass fucking time. And so some of the things in here are kind of about that, but also how they're applicable to other areas of life. And there was a time in which during their relationship, they separated for two months. For In the 73 years, there was a two-month period in which they separated. I hope she doesn't get mad at me for sharing this because um, I won't give the details of how or why or what happened, but they they just, they went through a two-month separation early on in their marriage, really early on. And I said to her, were you flipped out, panicked, devastated? Did you, were you thinking this is, we're never going to get back together or this isn't a break, this is over or anything like that. She said to me, in life, I really try hard not to anticipate anything. And I thought that was so interesting because career wise, I'm always trying to anticipate. Okay. Because financially, as an independent woman, I have to, I have to think, okay, so this is happening. So this company's not going to hire me because they're going with this type of person right now, or this thing is happening. And I don't have that kind of knowledge base. So I can't do that. Or this company's definitely going to fold because they're taking on this model or whatever. I'm always trying to anticipate. And so I feel like I do that in my relationships a lot, whether it's my friendships with my family or my love life. And when she said it in life, I really try not to anticipate. And I said, why is that? She said, well, because I don't find it to be helpful. So I didn't think about it. When we were in that moment, I didn't think, will we ever get back together? Won't we ever get back together? What would life look like otherwise? Will I find a new partner? How am I going to raise these children? She said, all I did was kind of just live in the moment and live every day. And then we did, we got back together and we were both able to just move forward. And she said, and from there, it just got better every single day. I was like, wow. So you really, you're not just saying you didn't think about those things. You really didn't think about those things. And she was like, I really didn't because all I was thinking was, this is currently sad that we are not together. I have kids to raise. I'm living my life. I'm going to do what I'm doing today. And I just kept doing that until we knew what we wanted to do. And that was so interesting. And so I do think while anticipation is essential and key in, in business, especially if you're in a, a evolving business of quickly changing business, you need to be able to anticipate like you do in sports, what's going where and how it's coming. doesn't mean you're always going to be right, but the anticipation is key. But in, in your love life or with your, in your relationships in life, not anticipating caused her to be able to live in the moment, deal with what was in front of her and be less stressed because she's not thinking about the future. She's thinking about today and figuring out how she actually feels today in the moment that she's living. And that was pretty cool to hear. So I wanted to share that with you guys. That's number one is that maybe, and who knows, this might not work for you, might not work for me, but her, it, her relationship advice was to not anticipate and to just deal with what's coming, which feels so opposite from everything I feel is naturally instinctive to me, but it's interesting. And it clearly, clearly worked considering they had a really long and still are in a long, beautiful relationship. Here is the second piece of advice she gave me about relationships. And then I think this is my last piece of relationship advice of the 10 stuff. Um, although everything kind of applies all over the place. This is the other thing she said to me. She said, this is key. This is the key to a long marriage. You have to find someone you like. And I was like, ha ha ha. And she was like, no, I'm serious. It's not just about finding somebody you love or somebody that you're compatible with or somebody who has money or success or looks. You have to find somebody that you like. Like you want to spend time with them because you like them. That is the most important thing she said, because she said, you're not always going to feel that way about your partner. If you get together 73 years, there are going to be some days where you're just like, oh, I fucking can't stand you today. But in general, you have to find somebody you like. And that one's key. And a lot of people end up with people that they just, 
they don't like. They love them, but they don't really enjoy their company because they don't really like them. They might be a good person or a beautiful person or a funny person, but if you don't like somebody, she said it's really, really, that's challenging, that that it would not work. So I thought that that was interesting because if you guys think about it, and, and maybe I'm curious how you guys feel, but think about your exes or your currents. Maybe it's helpful for today. And think about how many of them do you actually really fucking like? Like how many of them you're like, oh, I really fucking like that person. This is interesting to interesting to look at. Yeah. Interesting to look at. Let me know how you guys are feeling about this so far. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Would love to hear from you guys, including Katie the Good Witch. Yes, Katie. Katie in the house says, work has sucked my soul for the last couple months because my addict boss relapsed. Oh, Katie, that sucks. And left me running everything. Have a third and final interview with Caribou Coffee Tuesday for a GM job. Damn. It'll be like a $15,000 raise. Oh, my God, Katie. Thoughts and prayers. Good vibes. Appreciated. Katie, how do we all be your letter of rec? Like, can we can we all be references for you? Please make them call all the rock stars. We will tell them how awesome you are. I hope you get that. The general manager job would be huge. A $15,000 raise is huge. And this is something, this is not part of the advice, but what is so hard for anybody who is an addict or anybody who knows addicts is it's a disease. And so it's not, you can't get frustrated the same way that you would if somebody is just has free will to make all of their own choices. But at the same time, they are making all their own choices. And when you are an addict and you have to do something like that, it affects everybody around you. And it's so fucking frustrating. So yes to yes to you stepping up and taking over and yes to this job. I really hope it happens for you. Please keep us posted, Katie. Katie is like a, a walking um, bit of advice for everybody considering she has gone through so much in life and is just such a badass, freaking just badass. And so, yes, you're amazing. And Katie, I hope that uh, fingers crossed everybody send bunnies and hearts for Katie. You've got this, Katie. You've got this. All right, going to number three. Don't apologize for something you are currently still doing. So a lot of us, while we are doing something, we know it's wrong. But you're not ready. You should not apologize for something that you plan on and are currently still doing. So if we stay with the attic example, for example... When you are going through AA and you are sober, one of the steps is to call people and make amends, right? You can only do that when you are sober. You can't call people when you are still actively drinking and apologize for how your drinking affects them because it doesn't make a fucking difference. Same thing with any of your negative traits or any of your qualities that are really upsetting. If you're a cheater, and you're cheating on somebody. You can't apologize to somebody for cheating on them when you're going to cheat on them the next day and the day after, because then you're not actually really sorry, or you are sorry, but you're not ready to change it. And so your apology is fucking worthless. So in life, remember, only apologize for things that you are not going to do anymore, or you're done doing. You don't apologize for things that you're continuing to do, you're in the middle of doing, or that you plan on doing. Does that make sense? They have an interesting person here. Mm, this thing says just keep cheating. They also said the, the key to a long relationship is cheating. Mm, this thing, I think that you are dead ass wrong here. The communication, and if you want to be sleeping with multiple people, then be in an open relationship. That's cool as shit. Cheating is not. It's also very dangerous physically for people. So that's a big no. Gregory Castillo says, we learned cheating kills you. Shout out SEN Live. That's true. It, it is actually, there's actually a stat involved there. I'd give it to you guys, but you have to watch SEN Live to know what it is. Going back into the streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Hitman Hudson says, also, I got a job at the Home Depot. So there's some of that sweet, sweet Home Depot money. Thanks, Hitman Hudson. I appreciate you. I love Home Depot. How are you liking it there? 
I'm sure it's a very different to go there and work there, but I'm just so impressed every time I go there. They, they have fucking everything. Home Depot's shit. That's my thoughts on that. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Send in your, if you have advice or lessons that you learned this week, if you have questions or comments on any of these things, send them in. Really excited to hear from you. All right. The fourth one. Put, and I mean this to all of us, me included, you guys included. Put one thing on the books today to get excited about the future. So this one is key. And this is a lesson I learned when I am feeling extremely fucking depressed, which you guys know I have had huge bouts of for the last year, if not longer. It's been a tough go at it. And so one of the things that I have learned, and and by the way, sometimes you can be doing the coolest thing in the world and your depression doesn't go away. So it's not like this is a fucking depression cure. But one of the things I have learned about myself is that I need to put things on the calendar like a week away, a month away, a year away so that I tell myself I can't take myself off this planet. I have this thing that I'm going to do. If you are somebody who really struggles with mental health and wellness and is, um, has uh, suicidal thoughts or tendencies or extreme depression or, or feeling of loneliness that is so fucking overpowering that you don't know what to do. I think that this is something that is so essential. You have to put things on the calendar, solidified things on the calendar. So that could be buying concert tickets take, that are taking place on a date or reaching out to a friend and making a lunch plan for two weeks from today or um, getting tickets to the Van Gogh Museum, which isn't until October, or mm, wh whatever it is, putting a, you need to be at this, making a hair appointment, a nail appointment, something that you can do by yourself. They don't all need to cost money. Um, it could be putting, calling a friend and saying, can we go on a walk in three weeks at this time, this date? Whatever it is, if you put things on the calendar, you give yourself something to look forward to, and you have to think, okay, this is helpful because if I don't show up for this thing, somebody's going to notice that I'm missing and I don't want to do that. Or also just because you want to get excited about the future and you need to be thinking that there is a future. When we stop remembering that we have a future, we sink into the fucking sunken place. And so you've got to put things on the calendar. And so if you have nothing on the calendar right now, you have to look forward. And today, I'm talking about today, put one thing on the calendar. Sometime in the next month, sometime in the next six months, put one thing on the fucking calendar. This has been really, really big for me in my life. And I know that I always am like, I can't think past today. But you have to have these little things. Maybe it's, okay, on the 4th of July, you know you're doing a barbecue. Or maybe it's, okay, you're going to this wedding on this date in this place. Or maybe it's that you have a trip planned with your sibling for this thing. Or maybe it's that you are going shopping for new sneakers on this date, whatever it is, literally put it in your phone calendar or on your calendar on your wall if you still keep one, like a World Girls calendar. That's what's up. Ah, I love those World Girls calendars. Going back into the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Let's see what's going on in here. Uh, okay. Oh, Glenn saying that earlier he sent messages. Yeah, Glenn, for some reason those just appeared. That's weird. Oh, yesterday, apparently Joe also sent in um, a Streamlabs. What the fuck did I just put in my mouth? A hair? Oh my God. <laughs> Joe also sent in yesterday. Thank you for that. Appreciate you. He just sent it in without, um, and actually that was, yeah, that was yesterday. He sent it in without saying anything, but I really appreciate that support. Glenn Caesar said, Miles Cosgrove, Brett Hankison, Jonathan McNeely, Russell the cops who killed Breonna Taylor, all three of them for killing Breonna Taylor, Justice for all the people who've lost their lives due to excessive force. Hopefully today is the day. Hashtag say their name. Absolutely, Glenn. He also said, hello and good afternoon, Roxy and all your nicknames. Great job on all these stupid answers. How are you? Sending Friday well wishes. And thank you for hanging out. Peace, bunnies, hugs, and good stuff to you and yours. Grammy and Papo, be most excellent to yourselves and each other, RJ and rock stars. Cheers to fuck yeah news. Love and laughter for us all in each of our days, our weeks, our months, and even our years. I hope that you and each of us can find what it is that brings us joy and then do it. 
when and where we can and lose ourselves in it. Yes, Glenn. Glenn also says, RJ and everyone who shows up to give their support whenever, however, they can when it gets tough, even by yourself, you're not alone. Everyone who's battling, keep on fighting. You are a winner. You're kind, you're smart, you're unique. Showing up for people who need it and want it makes you dope as fuck. Being so unselfishly loving slash supportive of others, including strangers, whether it's on the internet or not, makes you humane and worthy. Your story is important, deserves to be seen and heard. Thank you, Roxy, rock stars, and world friends for all the super kind, supportive words that you always have for one another and doing your best to let us be us following the leader of the rock stars, Roxy's example. You make this place slash vibe great to be in. Oh, you're so sweet, Glenn. I don't know why I couldn't see these earlier. Glenn also says, stand against anti-Semitism. I stand against Asian hate. Hashtag stop AAPI hate. I stand against Islamophobia. I believe that Black Lives Matter. Let's go, Smets and everyone fighting. Hashtag smash cancer. And absolutely, rest in peace, Chris Burke. And love to Avery Burke. Hashtag rock stars forever. Absolutely to all of that stuff. What I will say, Glenn, the one thing that I don't know if I've said this to you, but the one thing I keep thinking when you say this is that I think we should change it. And you don't have to if you don't want to. But it's not that I believe that Black Lives Matter. It's I know that Black Lives Matter. Because belief sounds like when people have different beliefs on in life. Some people believe in God. Some people don't believe in God. Black Lives Mattering is not a belief. It's a fact. It's a fucking fact. So when we say we believe that it matters, that they matter, it's almost like somebody could not believe that. And it is a, it's a full fact, period, end of sentence. So I think it's just Black Lives Matter, or I know that Black Lives Matter, because it's not a belief. But you can keep saying it however you want. I don't want to, I love your, I love when you send these in and all of your amazing mantras and, and everything. But just my my little two cents on that. Glenn also said, hey, RJ, I just want to make sure that you, that this message and my earlier message, they're kind of my usual daily reminders, made it through to you. Okay, Grammy, the wisdom for us all. Grammy is speaking truth, straight up preaching, and I'm here for it. Yeah, so true. Grammy does speak the truth. She really does. So Joker40 in the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer said, I liked my exes, but not infinitely. My best advice I heard from my mom on writing, do what makes you happy. Simple, but so true. Dad on marriage. Wait, so do what makes you happy? Oh, in terms of being a poet. That's cool. Dad on marriage. He said he never wanted to make my mom cry. That's my goal. Hashtag be an anomaly. Hashtag Hey, sissy, hashtag Joker bunny. That's a great one, Sir Joker, because I feel like sometimes people get so cruel in relationships and vindictive that they do want to make people cry. And that's such a good point. You never want to make somebody cry. Why would you ever want to do that? So I like that one. And I, I appreciate that one. Thank you for sharing. And anybody else who has questions, comments, concerns, piece of advice, lessons they learned this week or in life, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Would love to hear from you guys. Shout out to everybody who is in here. Gerald Chase Wilson, um, you're awesome. He said, yes, you have to have something to look forward to. Al Moses says, people listen to this. This literally saved my life. Glad to hear that. Michelle O'Rourke says, depression is a demon. I went through it when my family immigrated to America from Ireland and Norway when I was 13 years old. That's got to be a tough move as a teenager. That's got to be a really tough move. Thank you for sharing all of that. And thank you to everybody who's always vulnerable enough in here and trustworthy enough of the rock stars to share every every bit of their life. We appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. All right. Going through, Andrew Thomas says, I posted a super chat and I see it right here. He says, hey, beautiful Roxy, here is a good lesson. Make sure that you are reading your work schedule right or else you forget to go to work. LOL. Oh no, Andrew, what happened? What happened? I got to know more. Hopefully you didn't miss a shift. Keep us posted. All right, moving forward. Um, okay, number five. Tell people when something sucks and don't try to make it right. So here's what I mean by this. When somebody's really struggling and says to you, I'm really fucking struggling, and then tells you how they're struggling. It's okay to say, wow, that sounds really fucking hard. 
that fucking sucks. Because when you don't start with that and you just go into help mode, often it invalidates how they're feeling. So if they're saying, wow, I'm having a really fucking hard time. I'm about to actually, I'm not talking about myself here, but a good friend of mine who messaged me and she's like, I'm just having a really hard time. I'm not where I thought I would be in my life at this point. And, you know, I am just really struggling with the fact that I'm still renting a place and that I don't have as much money as I thought I would have. And, you know, my partner and I are, I wish that we were doing better financially and that we were more able to have kids at this point or whatever it was. And at first, immediately I was typing out this response. That was something along the lines of, oh, fuck, I have a fucking bug bite in my belly button and it's so itchy and so annoying. It is so bad and it's so fucking itchy. I've never had that before. So I, I wrote back and before I sent it, but I was writing back like, but you're so beautiful and you're so amazing and you have a great job here and you've got this thing lined up for you and all that stuff. And then I realized like, wow, I forgot. Sometimes you need to start with, that sounds really hard. I'm really sorry that that's how you're feeling and what you're going through. And I'm here anytime you want to talk. And then you can say, if you want, something along the lines of, from an outside perspective, just so you know, it looks like you are doing incredible things. You got this specific thing going on in your career that I think is really going to go somewhere. I'm so proud of this thing that you're doing and impressed by your ability to do this. And you're, you can definitely go into like compliments and talk about all the things that they might not be thinking of. But initially, when people come to you and they're struggling, it's good to validate how they're feeling and let them know that that sounds hard. And even maybe if it's something that wouldn't be hard for you, because sometimes we tend to compare, you know, like I, my mom died. So anytime any of my friends come to me with their mom issues, by comparison, obviously mine's probably a little harder. I mean, that's not true in every case, but by a lot of cases, you know, if they're like, oh, my mom's being so frustrating because she called me 15 times today. It's like, she won't even let me live my life. Obviously that's preferable to my mom is dead. But it's not a comparison. Everybody's got their own fucking struggles. And so even, even if for you that might not sound that hard, for that person, that's how they're feeling. And so it's important to say, I that's that sounds difficult for you. And I hear you. And I hope that things get better. And then also point out, you know, probably she's calling so much because she loves you so much. And as annoying as that can be, it's really nice that she cares about you. And I'm sure you can see that as well. So making sure that you hear them and see them before you go into any kind of like, let me fix this or action mode. Does that make sense? And sometimes you don't even need to go into let me fix this or action mode. Sometimes it's good to just say, that sounds fucking tough. The one event, that sounds really fucking tough. So I'm looking for that as a friend sometimes. And you can always ask them, what are you looking for here? You want a little advice on this? Or you just want to talk about how tough that is? Because it does sound really fucking challenging. So that is another thing that definitely came up multiple times this week, as I feel like a lot of people are struggling. And sometimes I just go into fix it mode. And then I'm like, wait, actually listen to them first and just make them feel heard. Pink Sweets in the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer says, OMG, hi, it me. Pink Sweets, I'm obsessed with you. I'm excited for my beanie, LOL. Oh, the beanie's sick. Can you share the idea you have for the new script? It's okay if not, as for a lesson, the same boiling water that softens the potato hardens the egg. It's about what you're made of, not the circumstance. Oh, running it back for the people, including myself. The same boiling water that softens the potato hardens the egg. It's about what you're made of, not the circumstance. Holy shit, Pink Sweets. I mean, on my shoulder, you guys know I have tattooed better, not bitter. I am so a believer in situations that really fuck with you, having them make you better, not bitter. I feel like everything that's happened to me in my life has made me into a better person. I don't feel bitterness, or at least I really try not to. And so I think it's so important to try to go that way. But this is such a beautiful way of phrasing that because it really is about what you're made of. It really is about what you're made of. That is such a good one, Pink Sweets. I don't want to share the script idea yet because it's very simple and anybody could snatch it up. But if I do it, then you guys will know all about it. I fucking love that phrase though, Pink Sweets. I love it. 
Glenn Caesar in the house. Glenn Caesar says, yeah, Roxy, I know I believe that Black Lives Matter. I know and believe that Black Lives Matter, but know what the what that opposition can play word games to avoid it, but I can change it. Like I said, it's about speaking the, it's about speaking truth. So yeah, I can and will change it for you, me, and all of us to hear and say. You don't have to, Glenn, do what you would like to do. But that is my, as I said, it's just my two cents on it. Just my thoughts. Who else is feeling pink sweets? That was such a fucking good one. Ryan Payne says, exactly pink sweets. Fact. Gregory Castillo says, am a sweet potato. Yeah, you know. Rob Fishback says, damn, that's good. It's really good. It's a really good one. Also, shout out to uh, Vinny, original 151 in here. Popping through for the friends one. Coming in here saying, hi, friends. Hope everyone's doing well today. Look who made his way back to us. They always come home. We're so happy to have you here. Please enjoy your stay. We've missed you. And what kind of egg or potato are you? Everybody else, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Let me know questions, comments, concerns, thoughts as I make my way through some of this, these lessons that I learned this week. This is one that I had to pick up today. Don't add to the drama by calling more people. This one's hard for me. I'm not a dramatic person by nature, but I am somebody who gets very passionate about things and picks up the phone and wants to call like 15 people to be like, did you fucking hear this? Did you fucking know this? Don't do that. Don't do that. It doesn't help. Sit with something before you pick up the phone. If something is currently going on at work with your coworkers or something's currently going on with your group of friends or your family, your sibling, whatever, instead of picking up the other person, people who are either involved or not involved, like are on the outskirts, sit there and think about what will be helpful. This is similar to de-escalating, but we all get in this mode where if one thing's going on with somebody, you know, if something's going on with, uh, this this happened to be a work situation today, but say it was a family situation. Say it's like something's going on with my sister. She tells me, and then before, you know, before I know it, I pick up the phone, I'm calling my brother, and I'm calling our cousin, I'm calling my dad. It's like a no go. You just don't want to add to any of the drama. So always make, and it's a lesson for me that I need to remember, chill with it. Don't fucking make any more phone calls. Just fucking chill with it. Don't tweet about it. Don't Instagram about it. Don't fucking call everybody you know. Sit with it. And if you still want to call people in an hour, a couple hours, then figure out why exactly and what you're trying to get out of it. That is just a small piece of advice slash a lesson that I picked up today that I wish somebody had said to me this morning before I went and ran my shit. All right, moving forward. This one is really hard. And so this one is less advice and more lesson because I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to navigate this. This is just true in life. Some people lie. So there isn't anything to actually figure out. This is a mind-blowing one to me because as you guys know, I really just simply try to tell you guys the truth 100% of the time. And when I can't speak on it, I say I cannot speak on it. I don't lie. I say I can't talk about that because of X, Y, or Z reason. You don't just make something else up. But when things don't make sense, and you're questioning, why is this, this doesn't add up with this thing. Sometimes it's because some people lie. Not everyone doesn't lie. I'm sure there have been people here who have lied. People at work who have lied. Relationships, friendships, family members. Some people, and I'm not saying this to be paranoid of everybody, but sometimes things don't make sense because somebody is lying. And so we rack our brains and we try to figure out how the fuck does this all work? And this doesn't make sense with this thing and this timeline. And I'm just trying to piece it all to somebody is lying. And so that's why it doesn't make sense. So for us who are really honest people, for you guys, because you're still in here, very likely as a rock star, you are very honest. Otherwise, you wouldn't fucking want to be here. I mean, you, a lot of you guys are on Zoom with each other until fucking like five in the morning. So you can't really be a liar in doing that. And sometimes it just doesn't make fucking sense because somebody's not telling the truth. And so instead of killing yourself over that, just remember that some people are liars. 
for example, you guys know, as everything's been happening this week with me knowing that I can be both pro-Palestine and also against anti-Semitism because you people can do that. And somebody tweeting out about me saying that I said that the United States should fund Hamas, which I obviously didn't fucking ever say because I don't feel that way. And that would be psychotic to say. But somebody is allowed to just say that I said that because they're lying. And so I rack my brain for things like that. Like, where could they have, how could they have interpreted this? And what was the thing that they thought that this, and whatever, this is a small example of, of like 50 things that happened to me this week that had to do with this. But the bigger truth being that there was no more rhyme or reason to that. They're just lying. They're making up a lie. So people are in life, they're allowed to lie. And that's a crazy mind blowing part of life because the way I was raised, I, I was not allowed to lie. If I got caught in a lie growing up, I was fucked. You are not allowed to lie. You are allowed to, in my household, I was allowed to have sex, do drugs, be go out, have be friends with who I wanted to be friends with, pl- sign up for any kind of art, sport, whatever. You know, I was allowed to do a lot of fucking things with my hippie parents, but I was not allowed to fucking lie. Not about where I was or whatever. And if, if I lied, then I was in big fucking trouble because you are not allowed to lie. But a lot of people are not raised that way. A lot of people are raised in a way where they've learned to lie and lying gets them out of trouble. And so they've continued that in their adult life because lying either proves their point or lying makes it easier for them or whatever. And so just remembering in life when things don't add up, very likely somebody's lying. And that's just the way it is sometimes, which is fucking insane. Mind-blowingly insane. So that is... Number seven on here. What are your guys' thoughts? Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. What pieces or what lessons did you guys learn this week? I would love to hear from you. Glenn Caesar says, LOL, Roxy. No, I will change it. Thank you for being one of my teachers today. I appreciate the lesson. The fact of the matter is that life is a learning experience. That is so true. That is why we are here, to learn and grow all day, every day. And so I'm thankful for all of it. I know Black Lives Matter, hashtag BLM. Fuck yeah. That's the truth. Anybody else with things, questions, comments, concerns, or lessons that they learned this week, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer would love to hear from you all or super chat in. It's a great way to do it too. Moving through this list. See what you guys are talking about in the chat. Jake Yakovetta joining us. Thanks for that wave. Uh, Also, let's see. That's a mind blower. What, Al, that people lie? I know. It's hard for me to fathom as well, but it's just true. All right, number eight. It's probably not about you. So you guys know on this show, I very often, I barely ever talk about who I'm seeing, if I'm seeing anybody, what's happening. And I do that out of respect and appreciation for who could be listening to me. And also just, I don't... um, until there's somebody worthy of talking about, I really don't want to talk about anybody because uh, it just did not go well last time. So, but this, this is something that I will share with you guys. I was talking to somebody for months this year. Um, and I mean, months. And you guys know me, I'm really fucking slow. I'm really fucking slow. And so, you know, it's not like months of a normal relationship where it's progressing. Like, you know, people are like sleeping together and stuff. I just am very slow, but I was seeing somebody for months and this person straight up ghosted me. I mean, the just classic ghosting never responded to me. It has been uh, quite some time now and just never, never, never responded. And very likely I'll never hear from him again. That's not the lesson. (laughs) That's just life. That's the way that it fucking works. A lot of people goes people. This is the lesson. It's not fucking about me. When people ghost people, if you have been ghosted by a friend, by a family member, by somebody who's just kind of fallen off the face of the earth, by somebody you're dating, you guys remember earlier this year, I told you guys about one of my best friends, my best guy friend on the planet who 
for four months didn't return my calls. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? It's not about me. It's when people ghost, it's always about them. And I just want you guys to know that because I'm a confident, self-aware enough person to know that. And so I honestly, it doesn't really phase me. Did it, did it suck to have wasted my time? And, and was I like confused as shit? Like, why the fuck did he do that? Yes. But what it's not going to do is make me devalue myself because it has nothing to fucking do with me. It has nothing to fucking do with me. I'm fucking great. I've shown up every day as somebody who's great. I'm considerate. I'm caring. I'm compassionate. I'm all the things. And that is all I can do. If somebody is struggling in their own life and they do something like that, it really it has nothing to do with you. And so a lot of people, I think after pandemic or whatever it is, are kind of fucked up right now. And this has been happening to a lot of my friends. So I'm assuming that this has happened to a lot of you guys as well. People are ghosting either friends or relationships. And if you are somebody who gets ghosted, very likely it doesn't have fucking anything to do with you. If you, if you know that you did something like you cheated on that person or you lied to that person, then that's not really ghosting. Ghosting's when they leave for no reason and never respond to you. That is ghosting. And if they ghost you, it has nothing to do with you. That's that's a them problem. And that's just the truth. So any of you guys who have been ghosted, I just send my whole love to you because I know it's so hard to remind yourself, wow, that person's fucked up, not me. That person. That's a fucking psycho thing to do. We are put on this earth for human connection to ghost somebody is so fucked up. I ghosted somebody one time in my life. No, I might've done it more than that, honestly. But the last time I ever ghosted somebody, I was 25 and I was fucked up. It was a hundred percent about me. He was amazing. This guy was fucking awesome. I must have been 24, 24 or 25. <clears throat> he was, oh no, that's, sorry, sorry. I was 23. I was 23 years old. All of a sudden I was like 25. I was full-blown dating Ben then. So it was right before Ben. And this guy was fucking awesome. He was so sweet, so chill, so all about me. This it, We had so many connections because he like was from my hometown and we were out here. He was amazing. And I straight up 1000% while we were together, he went, he left the room. I walked out back. I left his place without saying anything. And I never responded to him ever again. We were dating for months and I straight up ghosted him because I was an immature, drunk fuck up. It had nothing to do with him. I don't know whether I was afraid of commitment or whether that just didn't float my boat that day or what the fuck was going on, but I was not well. He was amazing and called me 14 times like, where the fuck are you? Are you okay? Like, have you been abducted? And I just fucking ghosted. So I know firsthand that I had nothing to do with him. He was a gift to this planet and I was just not well. And so anybody who ghosts is not well. It's not a normal thing to do. It's not a healthy thing to do. It's not a mature thing to do. And if you're somebody who ghosts somebody, you are not fucking right in the head. Two years later, I called him because I was well. And I was like, I'm so fucking sorry. And he was like, it's totally okay. Thank you so much for saying something. So fucking nice. So fucking nice. But the point was that people who ghost are the ones that are not well. It's not the people they leave that did anything wrong. So if you're ghosted, you keep fucking doing you. And if you're somebody who ghosts people, get right in the fucking head because it's a horrible thing to fucking do to somebody. Fucking horrible. And apparently payback's a bitch because the karma of the world was like, mm, rocks, we're going to ghost you hard right now. And I'm like, all right, bring it on. Dealing. I'm still... Karma for my my past ghostings, and that is what it is. And if you did do what I did, where you've ghosted somebody before, and you have changed, you are 
really, you've worked on yourself and you are the best version of you, then do call them and apologize because they deserve that fucking apology. They deserve that fucking apology. So that, hopefully that one was helpful for you guys. Going back into the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Let's see what's happening in here. Okay, John Get Bent says, I always enjoy these lesson shows and advice segments. You rock, Roxy, that's all. Thanks, John, that's so sweet. I'm glad you like them. I don't do them that much anymore. And so, but I have been doing the once a week AMAs, which I'll probably do on Sunday. And I, I thought that maybe this one was needed right now. There wasn't that much entertainment news and I learned a lot this week, so... I'm glad you like it. Lloyd Nance in the stream of streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer says, Roxy, love ya. Lloyd, love ya. You're awesome. Appreciate you. Paul through JP says, going to a show tomorrow night in Venice called Laughs on Grass. Oh, that's fucking dope. Bunch of dope comics and every ticket comes with two drinks and a one joint. Two tickets, uh, two drinks and one joint. That's great. Pull up, Roxanne. That's fucking awesome. That sounds really fun, Paul. I hope you get lit city and tell us, all about it. Katie the Good Witch in the streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer says, I saw my former best friend right before COVID and she has completely ghosted me ever since. We are best friends for literally five years. Really bizarre, but I have a new favorite person now. And the most helpful thing was to realize maybe she just kind of sucks. Katie, like I said, this is 100% about her. And maybe not only maybe does she suck, but she might just suck right now. She might just not be fucking well. And that's not an excuse to treat people like shit. It's a horrible thing to do, but it re if you, you didn't do anything. So it's not on you. It's on them. And that fucking sucks. For people who ghost, you have to feel worse for them than you do for you only because they are clearly in a position in life where they are fucking not mentally there. Because you, in what world do you do that to somebody as an adult? You know, this is a 31-year-old man. Get your shit together. What the fuck is that? What a weird-ass way to live your life. No, 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 no. I'm just so not down with that. Anybody else? Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Strayer would love to hear from you guys. Glenn Caesar says, Roxy with that good positive self-talk. Yes, I know it's you talking about yourself and truthfully impacts you more than any of us. Oh, interesting. I hope it impacts you guys though, but I got to say that it's so fucking good to hear you give yourself a compliment and own it again, way to make a good vibe. Well, Glenn, I know that I'm not confident about some things. I am confident about others. I know I'm a really good actress and performer. I know that I'm an excellent interviewer and I know I'm a phenomenal partner, maybe above everything else. I'm a really excellent partner. And so if somebody doesn't want that, then that's, it kind of is a them issue. It's a weird one, but it's just uh, it's just another manic Friday. Uh, going back to this list, number nine, we have two more. So get in any of your stream labs if you guys have any before we get out of here. Number nine is GMP if you want out. GMP, I've told you guys about this one before. Get more powerful. If you do not like the position you are in in life, the best way to change it is to get more powerful. What does that mean? If you have to, if you don't like what you're doing for work, um, you know, if you don't like who you're seeing, your coworkers or whatever, you need to work harder and get a raise and be promoted and switch jobs. You know, you like the, the more powerful you get, the more you are able to create a life that you want to live. If you don't like that you think your ex looks down on you because of what you're doing, get more powerful. If you don't like that you have to be the one in your family at Thanksgiving that everybody makes fun at because X, Y, Z, get more powerful. It is such a the true answer to so many things in life. It's not, it's what, what a lot of us don't want to hear is that sometimes you have to work fucking harder, get more powerful and take yourself out of a position that you are currently in and you can do that. So GMP, get more powerful. Power does not mean, I don't mean get be a bigger dick. I mean, just get more powerful. Rise in your position, whatever it is, at whatever place it is in life. GMP, put in the energy and the effort to get more powerful wherever you are. I think that's probably only gonna resonate with some of you guys, but for those of you who it does, some of the best advice I ever received in my life. Because 
I'm in situations right now that I don't want to be in where I'm a hired gun. And sometimes that's hard. And in order to stop doing that, I need to write more scripts because I need to produce and sell them because then I need to get more powerful. So it is, it's really probably only going to resonate with a few of you, but for those of you who it does, it's a big piece of advice and I hope you guys take it. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer for any of your own lessons from this week. Jake Yacovetta says, I love how Apollo always lets you know where he's going to be so you can avoid it. Laugh my ass off. Oh, actually it's so funny because that's so is somewhere I could have probably ended up. But I told you I'm not going out tonight because I am. I've got some writing to do. I got some writing to do. For the last one, this is something I heard scrolling through TikTok and it resonated with me. And I was like, this is an interesting lesson. And if you guys have more, I am getting out of here after this. So stream loves them in. For this last one, some things that feel bad before are good after, and things that feel good before are bad after. So when you're thinking about what to do, you want to think about the after, not the before. Okay, so I'll give examples. Eating um, a bunch of broccoli and a salad, whatever. Beforehand, it's not like that's a fucking hoot. But afterwards, you probably will feel really good. Going to the gym. Beforehand, you don't want to do it. But afterwards, you probably will. Thinking about things that you get excited for. Probably you feel like shit afterwards. So going on a bender. Beforehand, that's fucking exciting. You're going to go on a bender. Afterwards, you want to fucking throw yourself off the roof. You guys know I'm a fan of an every once in a while bender if you can handle it. But not like the fucking everyday bender bender. So when you think about things, when you have to try to relate your thoughts on it to the after, not the before. So to the after, not the before. And I was thinking about that and how interesting that is that you want to think about how it's going to make you feel after, not while you're doing it and not before, but after. I'm trying to apply that too to like the men that I talk to or the friends that I see in my life. You know, you ever have those friends where every time after you see them, you feel like shit about yourself and you're like, I just don't want to fucking do that. So it's not about like, ooh, I'm getting like, yay, I'm getting dressed up for dinner tonight, whatever. It's like afterwards, you're going to feel like shit about yourself. There's a lot of elements, a lot of areas in life that you can apply this to. So think about how you're going to feel after something, not before it, in order to know if that's a good idea for where you are in life that day. And those are the lessons that I picked up this week from Grammy, from TikTok, from making my own fucking mistakes and everywhere else. Plus this epic one that now we will not forget from Pink Sweets about the same boiling water that softens the potato, hardens the egg. It's about what you're made of. That's such a good one. So thank you to everybody who taught us lessons today. If you are watching this after the fact, leave a lesson in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. What lesson did you learn this week? or a big lesson that you want to share with other people. Also like this video. And if you are watching after and you want to support streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer, I will read any of those comments. The first show that I come back, whether that's tomorrow possibly or otherwise Sunday, I always want to hear from you guys. So let me know in the Streamlabs, in the super chat, in the comments, in the likes, all of that stuff. All right, guys, happy weekend. I hope you have a good one. Much love to all of you. Thank you for letting me be Professor Roxy today. Hopefully some of that resonates. Lessons that we know all the time. Brett, Miles, Jonathan, arrest the cops that kill Breonna Taylor. All three of them for killing Breonna Taylor. It's a huge lesson. Don't try with the Holocaust. Another big lesson. And then on lighter lessons, check your internet. Blow on it. That's how we know if it works. Put down the toilet seat and lid. We don't want those plumes. And make your bed. Hopefully you have already at this point. But if you haven't, go do that now. Have fun this weekend. Stay safe. Stay sane. And I'll see you either tomorrow or Sunday live at the Roxy.